This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. All right. Third time's the charm, right? At least that's what they say. <laughs> that's how I clean my table. Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hard Rock Canucks and welcome to another top five video. The subject for today is gaming mice. And if you think about gaming mice as such a significant element in our everyday computer tasks, because the cursor is our navigation atlas and it allows us to get to places where we need to go. Um, it's almost as important as if not more important than a keyboard and the rest of the hardware that we you know, use within the entire computer sphere. So gaming mice are so subjective uh, in terms of the shape because everybody's hand size is different, everybody uses different uh, grip style, uh, depending on if you move your mouse a lot or you like to concentrate it in a smaller region and you know have a higher DPI. And because of all those factors, we've teamed up with a couple of YouTuber friends so they can also provide their insight on their favorite daily mouse uh, aside from the top five that we've picked here. So it will broaden your options if you're looking for uh, a gaming mouse in the near future. So without any further ado, let's outline what we have here on the table. Top five gaming mice, people, let's begin. At number five, the best budget mouse, in my opinion, goes to the SteelSeries Rival 100 at only $39, which offers all the basics like the textured side grips with a good shape for claw or finger grip, with an easy to reach DPI shifter, a very satisfying scroll wheel but with a tab, heavy middle click, pleasant side browser buttons, and it's also fairly light at 120 grams with a good balance uh, distribution through the body. Plus we have two illumination zones with an RGB suite, which for a $39 a mouse is just a bonus. They did sacrifice a bit on the build quality side as it doesn't feel nearly as nice as other more expensive options in our list, but it sure does make up with that awesome sensor. The Rival 100 comes with a custom optical steel series sensor, the SDNS 3059SS, which is based off the PixArt 3050 sensor. There is no acceleration, tracking is awesome, and I felt comfortable very quickly with precise aim. The only real downside is the inability to adjust liftoff distance. So if you want to lift the mouse often, you might need to develop a new way to use the mouse because the liftoff distance is around half a centimeter, which still moves your cursor when the mouse is coming back down. The primary left and right clicks fit a good balance between distance traveled and the weight, so the Rival 100 is the gaming mouse to get at under 40 bucks. At number four, the best wireless mouse of the year has got to go to the Razer Mamba Chroma. Body-wise, it's fantastic. Amazing shape for palm support. It's not that heavy at 125 grams, even with the built-in battery, but you have to keep in mind it's kind of back heavy, which makes lifting the mouse a lot more difficult as it slouches back. We have a really nice feeling rubber texture on each side, smooth glide feet, one of the best scroll wheels for gaming with proper side scrolling and distinct main scroll steps while offering a light middle click for other functions. If you're into customization of the actuation force of each primary click that is possible on this mouse, from 45 grams to 95 grams, which drastically changed the way this mouse feels for whatever game that you play, and that is one of the premium features that you don't find often. And the Razer delivers one of the best lighting implementations that is for the pretty visuals only, but man, the illumination of the charging dock and the mouse look fantastic. Which brings us to wireless performance. I honestly could not tell the difference between using the mouse in wired versus wireless mode, so the lack of cable does bring that extra sense of maneuver. Now, if you are after a wireless performer, you'd be happy with the Mamba as long as you are aware of its limitations, which you can find in our full review linked below. Coming in at number three, one of the gaming community's fan favorite is the Logitech G502, and there are many things to love about this mouse. First, the buttons. Primary left and right click are light and satisfactory. Pretty much everything is well laid out from the side browser buttons to the DPI shifter for your point finger with that three-step visual indicator to the sniper button, which enables custom DPI when pressed, and you can easily train your thumb to move into that position when necessary, to the profile shift, 
Shift, which sits right beside the infinite scroll enabler for the scroll wheel, which in my opinion could be the best scroll wheel on a mouse. It features light side scrolling that you can work with without spinning or pressing the wheel and is super uh, useful for editing. It has a metallic coating, so it feels kind of slippery, but that doesn't take away from the super distinct scroll steps and light middle click. And I'm sure you'll find proper use with that infinite scrolling, a feature that is missed on so many mice today. Also, it comes with adjustable weights if you find 121 grams to be too light and the shape beautifully supports your thumb and the palm. I have pretty large hands and I don't find the slim profile an issue. And combine all that with one of the best optical sensors, which has no acceleration, the Pixar 3366, uh, which has a load of customizations in the software and you have yourself one of the best mice of the year. And at number two, one of my most recent additions to the mouse collection is the Zoe FK1. This is the best ambidextrous design that I have ever seen that works very well to support your hand, uh, especially because the browser buttons on each side are not on the way, so you can hold it properly without accidentally pressing the buttons on the opposite side. Glide feet are fantastic, and the driverless nature of this mouse is refreshing. With four DPI settings that are color-coded at the bottom for that visual indication with 400, 800, 1600 and 3200 DPI. With perfect very low liftoff distance and an amazing accurate optical IR sensor, the 3310. I really appreciate their approach towards a competitive arena with no lighting effects, no body customization, so it all becomes kind of about the shape, the weight, the sensor and the switches. The weight balance is amazing, so if you tend to lift your mouse a lot, you love the FK1 and the same goes if you move the mouse over a large area. My aim has never been this good and that's after a very short practice period. The scroll wheel is okay here, it's got a good middle click, but the scroll steps could be more defined. And now something to keep in mind are the primary switches that are known for their heavy nature, especially compared to every single mouse in the stack, but they've listened to feedback of gamers and are refreshing their entire lineup. From now that we'll use the lighter Omron switches that will be used uh, to satisfy a larger spectrum of users. And coming in at number one, my go-to daily driver for all my cursor needs in the office and when I'm away is the Myonix Caster. I've picked this mouse as the mouse of the year because of the price, the shape, the switches, the scroll wheel, the sensor, driver customization, because this thing has it all, although it's only for right-hand users. Um, now, for my hand, this is the most comfortable mouse because it's fairly slim, yet with the right curves to support all the fingers. Thumb support has the textured side, which helps to seamlessly lift the mouse when needed. The side browser buttons have that satisfying light tactile actuation. The scroll wheel is rubberized with an awesome light middle click. But actually, it seems that over time, the scroll steps have become less defined. The Omron switches here are awesome, whether you click fast or slow, they feel amazing. And the DPI shifter behind the scroll wheel comes in handy all the time. The two illuminated zones are just a bonus with accurate colors that don't take away from the main function of the caster, which is outstanding sensor performance with the Pixart 3310. You can quickly perfect your aim for accurate shooters like CSGO and combine that with the extensive suite of driver customization and you have yourself a mouse that is all about craftsmanship, no gimmicks required and thus deserves our number one spot for the gaming mouse of the year. So that was my input on the top five gaming mice from our side. Um, now, as I said earlier, because mice are so subjective and how you use them, what your hand size is like, we've included a few YouTubers here to also share their insight on their favorite daily driver mouse. So here they are. What's up guys, my name is Edgar and I run a tech channel called TechSource where I do monthly PC builds, host competitions where people submit their desk setups and custom PCs, and lots of other tech related content. Running a tech channel full time is not an easy task, which is why I need a mouse that can handle this major responsibility. After cycling through dozens of mice throughout my entire lifespan, I've landed with the Logitech MX Master, which is a wireless mouse aimed at productivity. 
The ergonomic design with an arched back is really comfortable to handle, especially for claw grippers like myself. I do love the thumb wheel on the side which makes editing videos extremely easy, and although it's mainly used for getting work done, I do use it for casual gaming from time to time. I do have to say one of the best things about this mouse is the hyper scroll feature which helps me scroll through long pages quickly, and that's especially effective on Twitter. But yeah, this is basically the mouse I use every single day. I want to give a huge thanks to Dimitri for having me in this video, and I'll see you guys later. So my daily mouse is the final mouse because it's light, compact, and it just seems to work. There aren't any drivers to mess around with. It has thumb buttons, unlike other light mice. And I just feel like I have an aimbot built into the mouse. I don't know why, but that's how it feels. It uses the 3310 sensor like a lot of other mice, but it just seems like it's faster. It's not hindered by clunky software or driver implementations. Final Mouse really optimized this sensor for, for just pure gaming, and that's why I use it. What's up, guys? I'm Kyle. And I'm not Kyle. I'm Josh from Fractal Design. Oh, I should probably say where I'm from. I'm from Awesome Sauce Network. And uh, thank you, Dimitri, for having us in this video. Uh, we're here to talk about our favorite mouse. Um, I don't know if it's particularly for gaming or just all purpose, but I, I use this every day. This is my daily driver. It's a Logitech G500. I've been using it since 2011 when I built my first computer ever, uh, and it's still hold holding up. It's doing an awesome job. Um, it's really simple. It's not like necessarily a, a really aggressive gaming mouse, but it has all the features I need. Really nice weight balance, weight system, weight tuning, uh, and the software is really nice as well. So. And that's, that's your all-around, right? Gaming, this is my all video around. editing, all that sort of thing. Exactly, yeah. Uh, when I'm not using this, if I have my, my laptop and I'm on the go, uh, the Rocket Titan is also a pretty good mouse. I like the little shark fin on the top so I can like do side scrolling and stuff when I'm you know, doing side-by-side -side, uh, web browsing, things like that. MLG web browsing. MLG, no, I'm, yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. Um, so mine is, well, not here. Um, my favorite, uh, my daily driver is- What kind of mouse is that? It's the Invisimouse. That's it's, it's totally NDA. I bet it's light. Well, it is. It, it's carbon fiber nanotube visual cloak technology. Anyway, so, so the Logitech G700S is uh, my daily driver. Um, basically, I, I don't need a ton of buttons. Even gaming, I never use all of them. I forget where they're at. Uh, but I like the fact that obviously uh, it's wireless, but you can just plug in and run on powered mode. Because I've, I've had mice before where they're wireless charging cradle, you forget. And then the one time you need it, you've got to sit there and crap let yeah. me charge this for 45 minutes before I can do anything right um, it fits my hands pretty well but as you can see my, my hands are rather just, large just so they bit. don't fit everything perfectly I don't think there is a perfect mouse out there hmm. one of my other favorites though uh, was the funk ms3 um, it had the wider platform fit my hands better it wasn't my pref preferred mouse for gaming but uh, for like daily driver use comfort that sort of thing worked really well but those would be my two favorites if I can have two favorites sweet hey you're a pretty good liar yes, I, know, I, I know you hate both of those mice and you yeah all right I do love some infrared mice so this is the Mionics Castor I love this mouse it's one of the most accurate mice out there on the planet uh, the braided cable is not my cup of tea I love the sensor my favorite sensor PWM uh, 3310 they do some um, DPI doubling, don't care for that. I also love Zoe products, but I've had two EC1 Evos so far, and the button stopped working on one, the sensor stopped working on the other, so I'm like, whatever. Anyway, we ran to Shenzhen, decided to make our own mouse using the PWM3310 sensor that I love. And this one's no nonsense. Uh, we decided no software, just a few buttons, Omron switches, rubberized coating, decent ergonomics, and um, I've, I've tried to shoot for like a lower price point with this mouse, so that's why we just, no bells and whistles, just simple mouse, no RGB or any nonsense like that. In using this as a daily driver for the last six months, we've gone through six different revisions on this mouse to make it, you know, change this button, change the, the change this, or just little things like that. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it as far as just the tracking and the accuracy. It's probably the most accurate mouse I have because we didn't do anything to it. It just put the sensor in there, and so I'm really happy about that. You jump into Quake Live, and I feel like I'm doing better than I normally would. I don't know. When I was a QuakeCon, this is when we first started using this, everyone was calling it the God Mouse because I was getting like first or second place every time. And that's not normal for me. I'm usually like third or fourth place. So I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit of a joke. But anyway, uh, we're getting like a few of these made and mainly just to see how things go in the factories. We went and took a look at the factory. That's always important for me uh, when I check this stuff out. And I think, you know, a, a lot of the companies in uh, Shenzhen are doing a good job right now. So it's sort of the um, Silicon Valley of manufacturing. And it's interesting to learn how things work, and also, you know, when you're done, 
have a product. We'll have a few of these pretty soon, but I'm enjoying it. It's my daily driver at the moment. Hey, I'm Brian from Sergeant Ballistic Gaming, and when it comes to gaming mice over the years, I've always found myself going back to Logitech for their great balance of features, comfort, and performance. One of the greats in their lineup and still my go-to daily driver is the G500. It's a great successor to the venerable G5 and MX518 before it, and adds to them some great features including 10 programmable buttons, weight customization, on-the-fly DPI changing between five custom DPI levels from 200 to 5700, has a nice heavy scroll wheel with great pronounced intervals, hyper fast scrolling for productivity, side scroll button switches, and all those features are tied together with some nice no frill software that lets me customize all the inputs per game and store some on board the mouse itself. The ergonomics still can be seen in Logitech's gaming productivity lineup today, and even though this mouse is six years old, it's still able to hold its own against a lot of the new kids on the block. And that even includes some of Logitech's new offerings, but it's going to take a hell of a mouse to surplant this as my go to daily driver mouse. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dave Lee and I have a YouTube channel called Dave2D. So Dimitri asked me to make a short clip on what mouse I use as my daily driver and that's this guy, the Logitech MX Anywhere 2. So this is like the smaller sibling to the super popular MX Master Mouse. And I like it because it fits my hand really well and it's like a great wireless mouse. So I try to avoid wires and the Bluetooth connection is really solid and I switch computers a lot. So I use a Mac Pro at work, a MacBook Pro at home and once in a while I use a Dell XPS and having a mouse that can instantly switch between all three of these devices is really nice. Another thing is that there's no drivers or software that you need to download. All of the software from Logitech is entirely optional. And lastly, this thing performs really well. It's not as good for games as a wired mouse, but for casual gaming, video editing, and for my day-to-day -day work, this thing is super reliable and I can go like three to four weeks in between charges. So thanks to Dimitri for having me on. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time. Hello, Hardware Connects viewers. My name is Paul. Uh, my YouTube channel is Paul's Hardware, and thanks to Dimitri for inviting me on uh, this little mouse comparison video. Um, first off, apologies to all of you for the way my set looks, and probably the audio is not that great right now either. I'm in the middle of a big reconstruction project and remodeling, so bear that in mind. Also, Dimitri asked me to talk about one mouse, and I have six here, so I better get right to it. So let's start off with my daily driver. That's this one right here, the Myonix Neos 8200. And as you might be able to tell, I've used this quite a bit. Um, for this one, it really just comes down to the shape. The ergonomic shape really fits the contour of my hand. So I really like how it feels. I can use it for a long time. It's got a nice solid uh, sensor on there. This is a laser version. I actually kind of like the optical version of this mouse a little bit better, but this is what I use when I'm editing and that kind of thing. So that's what I can legit call my daily driver. But um, since I have multiple computers, I have other mice that I also use on those. So here's a couple more. Um, this is the Corsair M65, which is, uh, I actually just picked this up recently. Um, and this has just been a long time favorite of mine ever since they came out with this. Whether or not it has the uh, the Tramp Stamp logo on it, I still think it's a great mouse, really solid construction. And I do like a sniper button. I find that to come in very useful, not just for gaming, but also when you need to do precision stuff like in, like in Adobe or something like that. Uh, here's a mouse from Rocket. This is the Nith. I also use this on... Uh, Actually, this is currently connected to my streaming system, although I'm strongly considering switching this over to my editing system because of all the modular buttons on the side to set those up with macros um, to, so I can shortcut to different editing functions that I do while I'm ed editing videos. But really been a big fan of this mouse, the Nith, since it came out, although it is quite expensive. I also have a Rocket Tyon, and this is actually the mouse I've been using to game with most frequently recently because it's the one that's uh, actually plugged into uh, my main gaming system, aka Arctic Panther, um, my custom water cool build. Anyway, um, I really like this mouse too. I, I think I like the Nith a little bit better as far as the flexibility and the features and everything, but this one's nice and comfortable. Um, it's got a nice finish on it, and uh, again, tracking is beautiful on there. I also have a couple floater mice. These are mainly mice that I bring along uh, if I'm taking like a notebook on the go or something and I know I need to edit. Um, this is the main one that I use, which is the old school class classic Razer Death Adder, um, which just has amazingly uh, accurate tracking. And um, it's it's just a classic mouse that plugs, you just plug it in and it works. That's why I have these mice as my floater mice, is they, they pretty much work, they track really well. I've, I found that they work in like system BIOSes and setup areas. Uh, the wrap on the cable here on the Sensei Raw actually wasn't as good, so I don't necessarily recommend it for that. But uh, as far as just a standard plug and play mouse, those both work really well, but um, yeah, I gotta give it up. Ultimately for me, it always comes down to the mouse 
fitting in your hand and being comfortable to use for a long period of time. And for that reason, this is uh, the Myonix NAS. NAS is still the one that I've been using most frequently. Anyway, thanks for having me on the show, Dimitri. So before I skedaddle, huge thank you to everyone who was involved in the making of this video. Josh, Paul, Kyle, Edgar, Edzel, Logan, Brian, Dave. Did I miss anyone? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Dimitri with Hero Canucks. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more top five in 2016. Give this video a like if you enjoyed any of these mice and if you're considering buying any of these mice and if you are, you know, go like this on the keyboard and we'll see you in the next video. Josh and Kyle, Paul, Logan, Edzer, Edgar. I, I, I lost track of what I was saying, so maybe you can cut really quick here. <laughs> you, Dimitri.